How's it going guys? My name is Sean. Welcome to Venom Racing. Behind me is my 2004 Honda S2000. In today's episode, we're going to be installing a Science of Speed Stage 2 Supercharger Kit. Let's get some boost. choose the SOS Stage 2 Supercharger Kit over, let's say, a Turbocharger Kit? Well, I like the linear power band of the superchargers on the Honda S2000. I didn't want to eliminate that. Another reason why, I actually rode in one of my friends Supercharged S2000, and let me tell you, well, I had to buy one after riding that, so it was a very expensive ride. So the kit I went with was the SOS Stage 2, and why would I choose the SOS over, let's say, the popular, popular Craftworks Kit? Well, one, the Craftworks Kit not that it's a bad kit, especially if installed by LHT, but I've heard of a lot of people out running into issues with the build quality of the kit. It's not necessarily the supercharger itself, the Rotex unit, but just the kit itself that people have run into many issues with. So I decided, while it was cheaper, especially on Black Friday, um, I went ahead and went with the SOS tried and true supercharger kit because there are people on S2KI running this kit, six, seven years old, 80,000 miles, and haven't had any issues at all. So I was really impressed by the build quality of the kit itself, the R&D behind it. I mean, they supply everything within the kit. So that's the reason why I chose SOS. While it was a little bit more expensive, I want to keep my S2000 as reliable as possible and still be able to take it to the track, take it out to BMTs and still be fine and not have to run too many issues. Besides, yeah, then we'll get to that later. But, so the kit I went with was a Stage 2 kit. I opted to upgrade to the Novi 1200 over the 1220. So that give me a little bit of better performance in the future if I decide to go down. I want a little bit more power because it is an addiction once you get started. So I went with that unit. And then for the eight, for the tuning wise, I went with the AEM Infinity. I like the AEM Infinity just because you have so many different fail safe options. And I didn't want to mess with the K-Pro, um, changing out all my little cam sensors and all that whatnot. So I just went with the AEM Infinity for tuning wise. Injector wise, I went with the 1050 ID injectors for now. For now, I plan to upgrade to the 1300s and maybe the Walbro 450 and you go with the flex fuel in the future. But for now, I'm just going to be tuning on 91. And for the fuel pump wise, I went with the Walbro 255. Keep it simple. I said in the future, like I said, I'm going to tune, be tuning this on 91 to begin with. And in the future, I plan to go with the flex fuel kit. But that's going to be later on down the road, so then I can make a little bit more power potential. Also, up front, I upgraded to the race heat exchanger. That way, it kind of optimizes the reliability of this kit, especially on long drives and if, when I take it down to the track. I also ordered an oil cooler kit too, just to help out the reliability and keep the oil temperatures down because I don't, I won't be driving this car very easily out at the track or at future BMT. So I figure, might as well get an oil cooler for the good sense of mine. And besides that, guys. What we're going to do first, we're going to start with a fuel pump in the back, which should be pretty easy since I deleted my soft top. So I just got to literally just take off my hard top and we'll start there. And then the next thing we're going to be doing is installing the race heat exchanger up front. And then we'll actually get to installing the supercharger. Let's get it. Damn it, where's the tin? Day two. Alright guys, quick update. So, I have the Walbro 255 inside the fuel pump assembly. And while I was in there, a lot of guys recommend just cleaning the fuel filter slash sock. But here's my OEM one. And you guys can take a look at it. It looks pretty bad. And I figure the car's got 106,000 miles on it. Might as well swap it out. So I went ahead and bought a brand new fuel filter sock. Figure, why not? While I'm there, yeah, it's going to add up. But... I figure let's go ahead and get out all the little maintenance items while we're in there and make it as reliable as possible. So the next thing guys, we're going to reinstall the fuel pump. Then I'm going to go ahead and put all my, well, I didn't really have that many interior panels because I don't have a soft top. So that made it really simple for me. Now if you do have your soft top and all your interior panels, this would have been a pain in the ass. But I didn't. So that's going to save me a little bit of time. So I'm going to throw this back in there. 
Get all the interior panels, put the hard top back on. Alright guys, so I just installed the fuel pump. Before I do anything else, I want to make sure it primes correctly. Let's hear it. Well, people did say the wall bro is 255s like the wine. Quick update, let's see all what we've accomplished so far. We have the front race heat exchanger installed. Looks pretty good. And we went ahead and installed the water pump as well. You ground it off at this area right here and you actually take the power and you run it all the way along the main wiring harness and you take it into the cabinet of the car which we will fully wire up in a little bit. I ran the hose right here to the water pump. Now I'm running the top part which the next step is actually get quite a bit of a long hose to connect to the after cooler. It's going to run route through here. Now I actually don't have the after cooler installed yet obviously but I'm just getting all the front end pieces together at this time. So the next thing we're doing guys is we're actually swapping out the spark plugs with one step colder spark plugs and Science of Speed actually recommends you gapping them according to how much power you plan to make. So they say reduce the gap by .04 uh, for about 50 horsepower is what you're planning to shoot for. So the factory gap is .044 so I plan to add around 150 horsepower give or take. So I'm going with one step colder spark plugs and also I'm reducing the gap to .032 for that would be approximately 150 brake horsepower. All right guys, so what I'm doing right now, I'm actually removing my idler pulley. I'm also going to pull the tensioner pulley off as well because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be replacing my bearings while I already have everything off because I figure now is the perfect time before I go ahead and add the supercharger because after that it's going to be hard to be able to get to all of these things. So the idler pulley is your typical bolt. Just pull right off lefty loosey. Now the tensioner pulley right here, it's going to be reverse threaded. So typically you go hit loosen it to loosen it up to get the serpentine belt off. On To take the pulley off itself, you have to actually turn it to the right like you're tightening up a typical bolt because it's reverse threaded. So when replacing the pulleys, instead of replacing the pulleys themselves, I went ahead and decided that I was going to press out the old bearings and replace them with new bearings. I went with the SKS or SKF brand because I've heard great things about them. And I went with the 62032RSJEM to replace both of the idler and tensioner pulley bearing. Now, a little trick for y'all guys that are doing it the same way I am. When I was pressing them out, that's fine and easy, but to press them in without damaging the bearing and make it a little bit easier on you, get a for the idler pulley. I use a 19 inch, a 19 millimeter socket to press it out, and I use a one inch, one eighth to press the new one in. And what I did with the new bearings, I left them in the freezer for a little bit, so they would shrink just a tad bit, so it makes them easier to press in. All right, guys, let's get them installed and let's take the crank pulley off. So what you're going to be doing here, guys, is replacing your OEM. Crank pulley for the Science of Speed crank pulley, which is an OEM pulley, but it's threaded right here for an adapter for the drive of the supercharger. So this is the tool that you'll need right here. It's a Honda Acura crank pulley adapter. So what it does, it'll hold the crank pulley in place. Let me grab one real quick. So what it's going to do is here's the crank pulley. It'll hold that in place so it doesn't move on you. And there's an, you just have to put your socket, which is a 19 millimeter socket within here. So you have, it's a two person job, you have someone holding the crank pulley like this and the other person will be loosening it up. Alright guys, here's the Novi 1200 unit on the SOS bracket and the, all the pulleys installed. Take a little bit of clocking, I had to change a little bit of where the oil drain and feed lines go because this is a universal application so you have to set it up for what application you're using this supercharger for. And I also installed the brackets right here for the supercharger itself. Pretty much pulled the VTEC solenoid off the cylinder head, put this bracket spacer in between, and then that's where the oil feed line is. So it actually just bolts on right there, and you also use this bracket right here where the top part of the alternator is at. So let's go ahead and get it stuck on there, guys. 
All right, guys, here's the supercharger connected to the S2000. It connects right here from this bracket right here. And also here's the, the bracket itself for those three other bolts. Here's the oil feed line coming off that bracket as well. And I have the oil drain plug going straight into the oil drain plug is where the oil return line goes to with the kit. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to do is pull out the fuel injectors and tap the fuel rail for the uh, fuel pressure sensor. All right, guys, here we have it. Here's the AEM fuel rail. And the reason I went with the AEM fuel rail is because I wanted to put this 1 8 NPT fitting in so I could monitor my fuel pressure with the AEM Infinity. So I have it pretty much set up, and I have the ID 1050X injectors. So the fuel rail is completely assembled, and now we're going to put it into the car. Alright guys, quick little update. So I got the AEM fuel rail installed right here. And I also have the ID injectors installed. One thing, so they do have the plug and play adapters for the injectors. One thing I don't like about them is how much, I mean how much wire I have. So I almost had to reroute the wiring harness. I don't really like how I have it set up right now. But there's really no way to support it with the rail or so I just used a little bit of black zip ties for the meantime. But here's how that setup looks. I'll reroute that in a little bit. And if you look here, here's where my fuel pressure sensor sits right here on the firewall. SOS has a kit to do that right there. So it runs right there, and that's where the fitting is sitting right there. So yeah, it looks pretty good. This way later on in the future, I can put a fuel pump regulator up top, and then... We can run a Wabro 450 and go E85 in a little bit. But here's the setup as currently. Now let's get that after cooler installed. Quick little update. So everything is pretty much installed. You have the after cooler right here. You have the air intake at this point. All right, the vacuum lines right here to the bypass valve that goes underneath the air intake. And that runs over here, so it recirculates. And this is actually the breather tube for crankcase. So it's all it's all together, guys. Next thing I have to do is put some antifreeze inside the radiator and also the after cooler. Refill it back up with the oil, and install AM Infinity, and we're good to go. Infinity with the bracket that Science of Speed makes and also their plug and play adapter harness. So this actually, I think it's this one. So this one actually connects to the wide band, the AM wide band. And this actually right here, you actually wire up your own connector so you can, it's more of an accessory output. So for an example, I'm running the fuel pressure sensor. I'm going to have to wire that in so it'll plug in here. So that's pretty cool because all of your sensors can actually plug in from inside the engine bays instead of having to route them into the ECU. And here's the OEM computer. She's about to go in there, guys. And as soon as it starts, oh. yeah, she's flooded. I'm just kind of working on the fuel table a little bit. So we're kind of working on the AM Infinity at this time? Yeah. 
All right, guys, so we got the S2000 started. It took a little bit of things. I might have cut myself. I think I made a deal with the devil, to be honest with you. That's what really started it. But what sacrifice. I would right? have to say, John, he got everything set up and running. We had to actually not use SOS's base map that they sent. For some reason, why it would not give us Spark. But at the end of the day, we just ran off the wizard setup and just set it all up for the S2000 on AM Infinity. John leaned us out a little bit over here. Running way too rich, but way too rich. <laughs> way too rich, but we got that all taken care of. I was able to adjust the fuel table, turn it down a little bit. I got her idling really well. We can even go up to about 5,000 RPMs. But I'm not an expert tuner, so I didn't do any more than that. Just got it so we can get it on the trailer and get it to a proper tuner that actually knows what they're doing. And so at the end of the day, guys, we got it running. We're going to get it pretty much ready. I'm going to go ahead and bleed off the coolant system and get everything ready to go. And then we're going to load her up on the trailer or maybe even do remote tuning. We haven't decided yet. But she's almost ready to get tuned and then she's going to get to the street. So, John, you know what this calls for, right? I got you. I got you. Okay, okay. You know, this at, you know. Uh, uh, Sean, we're missing one thing. I got Jaeger, hmm. but I'm missing, I'm missing something. Hold on. I know some. Give, give me a second. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you bring some? Okay. All right, hold on. Someone's outside. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's check it out, guys. I think this is like a blues. So, all right, guys. So we got some monster right now. I'm not gonna stone cold Steve Austin this right now. How did? How did? Okay. Uh, I don't even care. I'll take it. All, all right, right, guys. Monster Jaeger. All right, John. Let's pour it up. So you know how we like our Jaeger and Red well, I guess we're going with Monster. Yeah, Red Bull didn't want to sponsor this video, so we're we switched over to Monster. White Monster at yeah. that. You know, if I was shooting this in 240, I could do this in slow motion. Yeah, there, you go, there you go, there you go, there we go. John, we don't have a, a spoon, but we have a screwdriver. Are you going to be that do savage? It. Do it, let's go, okay. Send it. Alright guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you're looking out to do an SOS Supercharged S2000, trust me, the kit makes everything so easy, the instructions are completely laid out, it walks you straight through it. I mean, even a monkey could do it. A monkey? and I lost control of my car. Shock advised. Stand clear. No, 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 no. For the most part, I'm glad that I bought a car with the trunk monkey. The trunk monkey. A light... I, I mean, I, I... Next episode, you'll see a monkey putting together an SOS supercharged kit on an S2000. <laughs> that monkey's name is Sean. So stay tuned for the next video, guys, of this bit, this bad SOB getting tuned. And John's going to have to get a super or a turbo charger after that, after he drives it, because I'm going to let him drive it. So Yeah, that's going to happen. That's definitely... I'm just going to be spending way too much money. <laughs> it's worth it. So anyway, Sean, we got it running. Cheers, man. We're good I, to go. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe for more, and we'll see you all guys in the next one. Bitches love cake. What How's it going, guys? My name is Sean. My name is John. Welcome to Venom Racing, and today we're going to be supercharging my Honda S2000, and we're actually in a Austin Hilly 2000 right now. Or it's like a... is it just an early S2000? You know what we should do, John? What? We should put a F20 in this, or maybe even a K-Swap in this thing. Tell me I won't. Well, what is this thing right here? Is this the total Honda S I? <laughs> yeah. So is that a K24 motor? It is a K24 motor. You know what? Let's put that in this! Hold on. To Odin Sun! I can do that with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work as I thought it was going to. Let's get to the S2000. 